Box modeling is a term that's sometimes used to indicate subdivision surface modeling. That's because with subds we almost always start from a box primitive like this one. As we saw in the previous movie, a box is composed of all quadrilateral polygons, which is the optimum structure for subds. Before modeling with subds, we should determine the appropriate level of detail for the control cage. Remember that the box or the original base object is merely a control cage or a means to an end for shaping the object with subds. We need to determine how many points we need on that control cage. Too few vertices or control points would make it impossible to resolve the curvature we need. We literally wouldn't have enough control. Too many vertices on the control cage would mean we need to micromanage all of those points, which would defeat the purpose of subds. Too many vertices can result in a lumpy, messy output instead of a smooth, flowing curvature. We can always add and remove detail from the control cage during the modeling process, but the work will go more quickly if we plan it out well. Generally, we want to model the overall shape first and then proceed to adding small details. In this case, it makes sense to start with control cage vertices approximately 5 centimeters apart. With that box selected, we'll go to the Modify panel and increase the number of segments. We'll give the length segments a value of 8. Likewise, the width segments, I'll give a value of 8. And it's important in this case to use an even number for the width segments because we're going to model using the symmetry modifier. And we're just going to model half of our seat cushion and reflect the mesh to the other side. And for that to work best, we want an even number to the width segments, or the number of segments in the x-axis here, so that we'll have an edge loop or a seam running exactly down the center of the object. I'll also increase the number of height segments, bring that up to a value of 3. Now I've got control vertices spaced approximately 5 centimeters apart everywhere on the model. With the initial level of detail set up, we can go ahead and convert this to editable poly. Right click, convert to, convert to editable poly. Since we're going to be using symmetry, it's a best practice to delete the half of the model that's going to be reflected. This isn't strictly necessary with the symmetry modifier, but I do recommend it because otherwise you may have issues with the symmetry and not know it. To prevent any possible issues, I'm going to delete half of the model. Go into polygon subobject mode. And in the front viewport, click and drag to make a selection rectangle around the polygons on the left side or the negative x-axis. With those polygons selected, you might want to tumble or orbit around in the perspective view just to make sure that you've selected everything that you intended to. And with all the polygons in the negative x direction selected, press the delete key to delete those. Now we have half of a box with an open border. And I'll exit out of polygon subobject mode to show that our pivot point or the center of transforms is right there on the seam. We can see that more clearly if we go into the move tool. This is helpful for the symmetry modifier because the pivot point is the default position for the symmetry plane. We've set this up so that now it's going to reflect these polygons to the other side along the open border or along the seam. That's how to set up a box primitive in preparation for symmetrical modeling with subds.